Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart Sun and Black In again asking you to hit that share button. Um, thank you if you have hit share or like or subscribe either one. But uh, the share button is the one that benefits us. Now look. Um, at the end of the day, I want to go ahead and, and put this out there. Some of these brothers out here attacking Sispem and I'm sick of it. Now, I saw it when I was on vacation in Malaysia with my wife, but I didn't have time to, to record and uh, especially to record and upload. I didn't even have my laptop. Um, now I do. And I'm going to say this. M.O.T., my man. We got a bunch of cats that are just begging for you to go in on them. Not like the one that you had in your crosshairs before. No, this, these cats are different. They're much, these targets are begging you, man. They're actually begging you to take your focus off the other one and go after them. You know who, you, and you niggas know who you are. Look, and I'm going to say this too. Um, I'm going to explain this, that even though I have learned a lot from O'Shea in this regard, I have to actually disagree with O'Shea too. You see, O'Shea is right when he says that you're not really being celebrated in other communities either to a certain extent. But that's mostly the white community and communities that legitimize whiteness. Again, the white community and communities that legitimize whiteness are the ones in which we're not celebrated even on an individual basis. That's what they're doing, though, when they say you're different from other blacks is still better than what we get in the black community. It's still better, but it ain't enough. But where I went... My wife and I were celebrated on an individual basis. Now, we, nobody ever said to us, you're not like the other black folks on TV. But when I first got to this country in which I'm now sitting and which I live and work, I did hear you're not like the ones on TV. But I said to them, well, you're not like the Arabs on TV. Well, the TV doesn't have it right. Exactly. It doesn't have it right about any of us, sir. It didn't have the Native Americans depicted correctly. You have to understand who, who makes the moves for the TV. Is it Arabs, black folk, Indians, or white folks? It's white people. And there you go. You think they're going to tell the truth? No. A light went off in their heads. That's the difference. You understand now. O'Shea, you need to be on the, on the system side. I'm not, and not just you, but even these other cats that are outright going in on us with no respect, just dissing us. I'm saying y'all on the wrong side. We don't need to shut up and be quiet and just leave. We need to be loud about it because we were asked why we were leaving by the collective sisterhood. When we were just bouncing and going, we were asked why. Now it's time we turn around and we answer. Now when that skit that BGS did, what well, he didn't do, but he showed the skit by Maya Angelou back in 1968. We don't even know the voice of that male actor. I never heard his voice in that skit. I never saw him elsewhere, so I don't know what that male actor sounds like when he talks. Because he never spoke in that skit. He listened, he looked, he dressed and bounced. And when she said at the end, you just going to leave me with these kids. A light went off in my head. Either they were not his kids to begin with. Or they were and she had driven them off over time. And that was the day he left because he had to. One of them too. And even then, she wasn't going to learn. Don't run men. Do not run off the father of your children. That wasn't going to make it to her. I got a, a female cousin that's actually going through. Um, she's actually going through it. She got one of them niggas. He, he's the stereotype. He's one of them jigaboos. He choked her. She divorced him. She went and got child support. Um, and he ain't paying it. And... He ain't visiting when he said he will, and the kids are beginning to kind of forget about him. She's going through this, but she actually did go through a rough ride. And now she's on the feminism train. She about to become a rabbit feminist, pretty much saying, ain't no man good enough unless he going to take care of me and these kids that he didn't help make. <laughs> she's about to become like that because of one of them ignorant niggas. <clears throat> so when I hear... Guys that are not like him compared to guys that are like him. I'm actually quite upset. Because I know the difference between the man that didn't cause her this and the man that did cause her this. Now I understand it.
if we try to just leave silently, we're going to be asked why you leave. Some of us turned around and began to answer. And now you're sitting up and saying, you ain't got to talk about this. Just go. No, we have to talk about this and tell them because they asked. And when we didn't, you see, when that man walked out that door and that skit that was 68, what happened then? After that, Alice Walker, Oprah Winfrey, you understand? Black feminism, niggas ain't shit. We didn't say anything, we just bounced. And this is what we got for it. Now it's time for us to say we're leaving because you're a bitch and you drove us away. It's time for you, nigga, to say the same thing. Okay, well, I ain't leaving, but they leaving because you was a bitch and you drove them away. Or better yet, bitch, I'm leaving too because you were a bitch and you drove us away. And not only that, if you want us to mentor your kids, we're going to tell them what the fuck you are like. We're not going to tell them to hate you or disrespect you as their mother, but we're going to tell them this was your mistake so they don't repeat it. And they know what not to look for. That's what we're going to do if you want us to mentor your kids. And we agree to do it. Those are the terms. That's where you need to be, bros, with us on that. Loudly leaving, telling them the answer to their question, and that we ain't going to mentor their kids without telling them what the mama was like and what the mama's mistakes were. So that they don't go looking for women and make the same mistakes thinking this is normal. That's real. Because that damages a kid when they see that. As we know. Um, when I was in Malaysia. I want to explain something I noticed. My man had gone through it. He had one woman that cheated on him. He was about. He was engaged to marry her. But this woman cheated on him. Then he's spending time with another woman. That he'd like to. He's considering for marriage. But he wants to see what she's like. And which is normal. He hung out with her. With my wife and me. Because he wasn't trying to hang out with her in seclusion. Which is a good thing. Because Muslims ain't supposed to do that. However. Here's the thing though. I had to tell my man look. You got to figure out one thing. Because this new woman he's hanging out with. She's very nice. She ain't very materialistic. She's actually quite spiritual. But she's a single mother. Now, she was married and that's how she became a single mother. That's what it was. She wasn't just running around here getting pregnant by niggas and became a sick. She's She was a former wife of somebody with one child, which is far different from what we see in, in bizarro nigger America. I ain't calling it black America. That's nigger America. The difference, though, is this. She has already stated she understands that the child is not his responsibility. He needs to be nice, but that's not his responsibility. That's not his burden. She's already stated that. Secondly, secondly, she has said to him, I don't want you buying expensive gifts and name brand stuff and wasting money. Because if you're trying to start a business, we... You and I can live off of things that ain't got nothing to do with name brand. All right. You're going to have to reinvest in that business for a while. Don't you make it fail being irresponsible. Now, she's already said this. So she could be this. This could all be a front or it could be real. And he's going to have to figure out which one it is. But at the end of the day, in the worst case scenario, if she's just if she's that irresponsible nigga, just of another race trying to put someone else's kid off on him at the end of the day if it is that he does not have to leave his whole race and nation of women to find better within his whole nation within his own race and nation he's a malay man within the malay population he can find different and better and his mother will look for him we don't have that so what do we have to do we got a bunch of bad bitches trying to get good niggas I shouldn't even say niggas. We got a bunch of bad bitches, niggas, trying to get good men to pay the bill so that they can get some bad niggas to serve them some penis. And want us to accept this side kind of thing. Now, what if you're just a normal man in the middle? They still want you to do it. Pay the bill for somebody else. You buy from my candy store all this, this regular run-of-the-mill bottom shelf candy, but you pay top shelf price for it. 
But the top shelf candy, I don't already gave for free to somebody else. That's what you're supposed to do if you a real man. That's what we're dealing with, and they're not dealing with that. And their women do work alongside their men because they don't have a lot of money. They don't control the economy like that. So no. No. Their women aren't just sitting up at home under the air conditioning. Their women are out there in that heat and humidity, which is year-round because there is no winter there. In the tropics, and they're working. If it's a restaurant, if it's whatever the case is. There are Muslim women there that are Malay and they work tourism. They have to serve alcohol against their religion to guests. They don't blame the men for it. They don't say, well, you men are dominating. You ain't men. And that's why I'm in this scenario. They simply say, well, the Chinese don't give a damn about religion and they own the economy. And this is what it came down to. My man told me you got a lot of Malay women that they, they, they want to know what your job is because they want you to buy them expensive handbags they can show off to other women. They do exist, but the alternatives to them also exist. So you know what my wife did? My wife went and got the lady he's talking to a handbag because she travels frequently. She found jobs in other places, and on, on occasion these jobs uh, allow her to go back. So my wife went and bought her an expensive travel bag that's designed to last 100 years so she could pass it down to um, her son or daughters if they travel later. So it was costly. But my wife got it as a gift and I went ahead and chipped in more than 50% for it. I did it just because I could afford it and it was a gift and it was... Uh, it was a nice thing to do because she had done plenty for us and she didn't know us that well. It had nothing to do with whether she's going to marry him or not. However, there's something that can be learned from this and, I, and that's why I'm recording this. She does not allow materialism to rule her. She winds up with some things that are actually of high quality anyway. The other ones that are chasing the expensive handbags... They wind up, used up, pussy stretched out and single because they're fucking for handbags and people eventually find this out about them and they can't shame good men, good catches into settling for them later on. This is known. In black America, it's not like that. I'm sorry, nigga America it ain't like that. Sispim was forced Ibmore was forced. This is not something we have a choice about. I will tell Sispin men, leave them white women alone and leave alone women from other backgrounds whose communities legitimize whiteness. Leave them alone because they're dangerous, but don't refuse uh, women because they're from outside of black America and, and, and don't stick with just Sapphire in the name of keeping it black because there's more to black people than just black America. I'll say that to them, but we, do we have to leave specifically black America to find women uh, to start families with? Yes, we do. We don't have that option. For many of us who don't fit the nigger stereotype, we can't do that because we should not have to settle for only the unattractive women in the community just because we're not the stereotype. If there's a reason that a black man should have to settle for only the unattractive women in his own community, not being the negative stereotype placed on them by someone else is not that reason. If a man should only be allowed to, to choose from the ugly women of his community, you think about what that reason would, would, would a good reason to justify that would be, but not being the enemy's negative stereotype cannot be that reason. So in other words, not being treach from naughty by nature is not a reason that a man should only be able to get treated well by an ugly woman from black America. That's not asking too much. Because nowhere outside of the West is this an understood norm. Now, in the West it is, even for white Americans, white Canadians, white Britishers, but nowhere outside the West is this an understood norm. No, no, they wouldn't understand it. And I know because I explained to my mans in Malaysia some of what it was like among black Americans, and he said, oh, that is an impossible situation. I told him it was like that with white folk too, but they were going next door to Thailand and, um, um, and the Philippines. 
But Black Queen will also go next door to Thailand and the Philippines. And he was like, oh, I see the Western women are a problem. That explains the Westernized women here. That's what we understood. It confirmed what I've been telling y'all before. So you cast it on the other side of the fence, you're on the wrong side of the fence. That's the first thing. You're not just wrong for coming after us. You're wrong for not joining us. If you're going to open your mouth, you should have been on this side. But hey, look, you don't want to do that. You keep telling these sisters that they can find what they've been driving away. You keep telling them they can do that. You're just like Nicole Michelle in that case. Which is even worse because you're a man telling them that they can find men that are going to give them all that they want as though they deserve it just because they want it. Which makes it more believable. And you're going to set them up for a bigger failure and disappointment because men who can give them what they want, men who can give them a third of what they want in life, but are decent men are bouncing. Men who can give them all they want in life, materially speaking, are definitely bouncing or they're just not willing to stick with one. And you're not explaining this to them. You're telling them they can have their cake and eat it too. Even when they're turning around and saying you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. You're telling them they can have their cake and eat it too. That the basics for us, the basics that we would ask for, looking nice and knowing how to treat us, those basics those two basics don't go together. They're telling us this. And you're saying, yeah, well, baby girl, you can just be a freak and fuck all the worst dudes right now and get one of the other guys to take care of you later. You're saying this to them. They're looking at you and thinking, I'm not offering, I'm not even offering two things that are not mutually exclusive. I'm, we're artificially making two things mutually exclusive when they previously were not. And you're telling us that we can have two things that are mutually exclusive. A part of them is looking at you and saying, you dumb nigga. You really are easy, aren't you? They're looking at us and at least they realize that we're realistic. Anyway, look, thanks for being patient. Hope this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.